Okay, so this little video is all about chords and tangents. And to start off, let's go ahead and take a look at what a chord is. Well, a chord is simply a line segment that has its endpoints on the circumference of a circle. So here we have a circle, and this one happens to be a little bit of a crop circle. And if I was to highlight this line right here on the uh, triangle here for you, this segment, you can see that this segment has its endpoints on the larger circle. So that makes it a chord. That makes it a chord there. <clears throat> There's another chord right here. That's also a chord. Okay. So um, th that's all a chord is. It's just a, a segment that's drawn inside of a circle has its endpoints on the sides of the circle. Okay, let's talk about a specific couple of chords. Uh, this this specific pair of chords is called intersecting chords. And to intersect just means they cross, just like an intersection, right? Like if this was a road and that was a road, they'd intersect right there. That's the idea of that. To intersect just means they cross. So you can see right here that they intersect at this spot right here. Well, the thing about intersecting chords is if you multiply their parts here, those parts are equal. So watch. If I take 3 inches, the length of this, times 4 inches, the length of this, that's 12. So 3 times 4, and I get 12. Okay. <clears throat> so that's going to actually be equal to this length here. So from on this other segment, from here to here, on this other chord, so that's two inches, let's say. And then over here, let's say this is six inches. Well, if we multiply two times six, we also get 12. So if we multiply the parts of the chords, we just happen to get an equal number. <clears throat> so if two chords are intersecting in a circle, multiplying their, their respective parts here gives you an equal value. So this times this equals this times that. Okay, so we can solve problems and we'll do one, an example in a bit. Okay. The next pair of chords is a, a, the diameter chord theorem. And a diameter really is just a special chord because you can see that it also has its endpoints on the uh, sides of the circle. But a diameter we know goes right through the center of the circle, making it a diameter. So we don't really call a diameter a chord, but it is. Now, if a diameter and a chord intersect in a circle, the diameter and the chord are perpendicular. Or sorry, uh, if they're perpendicular, what that means is that the, the uh, chord is cut in half. Okay. So if the diameter and the chord are perpendicular, then the chord is cut in half. Okay, I misspoke earlier. If, if they're perpendicular, then the chord is cut in half. So that means if uh, CD, let me write this out, if CD, the diameter, is perpendicular to TU, then CD bisects or cuts TU in half. And then the converse of that is also true. If CD bisects TU, then that means that they're perpendicular. And so if you have it bisecting, then these are perpendicular. If they're perpendicular, then that means it bisects. Pretty interesting. Let's, let's look at a couple problems here. <clears throat> yeah, in this one, we're supposed to find the missing length. So this is three inches from here to here. And this is our missing length. This is 2 from here to here, and this is 8. So how do we do this? Well, we know that 2 times 8 is going to equal 3 times x. That is to say that this times this is equal to the 3 times our missing side. Okay, so 2 times 8 is... So 
16. And that equals 3x. Okay, so then if we go ahead and we divide by 3, we get 16 divided by 3, which is 5, and a little bit left, so 5 and a third equals x. Okay, so the, our missing length here is 5 and 1 third inches long. Okay, uh, in the next one, we see that we have a diameter that is perpendicular to the cord, and then we have 5 centimeters here, so how long is that? Well, we know that if we have the diameter and it bisects, or sorry, it's, it's perpendicular to the cord, then it bisects it. So that means that this is the same length as that, and x just simply equals 5 centimeters. No big deal. Okay? The next thing we want to look at is tangents. And this is a car. I think this is the Audi A7, if I remember correctly. And uh, this is a good illustration of what a tangent line is, and my favorite illustration of a tangent line. Okay, a tangent line is actually a line that intersects a circle in exactly one point. So, it's a little hard to think about this, but if you really think about it, if we have the wheel of a car and then the road, the wheel of that car actually only touches the road in one point. That's the idea. In reality, there might be like a little tiny spot, uh, maybe it might be a couple inches long, that touches the road. But, <clears throat> the idea of a tangent line is that these two actually only touch in this little spot right here. Oop, there's a point right there. You can make a point where they touch. You can see that in yellow. Let me, let me make that a little bit bigger for you. There's a point right there where they touch. Okay, and that spot is called the point of tangency. Let me pick a better color. And yeah, this is called the point. Whoopsie. Come on. Okay, the point of tangency. The point of tangency. And then this line here is called a tangent line. Now, you might remember tangent from trigonometry. They are related, but I'm not going to tell you how today. I'm not going to tell you how the tangent line and, and the uh, point of tangency and the and tangent from trigonometry, I'm not going to tell you quite how they're related. Um, they are related, and actually how tangent is solved is using a tangent line. But the idea is uh, a little bit different than what we're going to be using today. Okay, so... <clears throat> The next one is the tangent radius theorem. So if we have a tangent and a radius, they are always perpendicular if they, sorry, they, intersect at the point of tangency. So remember, the point of tangency was this point right here. Okay? And it seems as though the radius does, in fact, intersect the tangent line at that spot. So what that means is that these two are perpendicular. All right. <clears throat> the next concept is intersecting tangents. Okay. Intersecting tangents, if two tangents intersect uh, outside of a circle like this, if two tangent lines intersect outside of a circle, so you see they intersect right there, that means that they are equal in length. So this side, let's say it's uh, 10 inches, is going to be equal to this side, 10 inches. And I put a little picture of a telescope down here because I wanted to show you that this is how they calculate and how they work on telescopes to make them work the way that they do. So you can see that we have two lines coming up to this lens, this sort of circle right here. And those two lines, because they intersect the circle in their tangent lines, and they intersect the circle only in one point on the outside there, they actually are the same length. And it's very important that they're the same length because if not, 
then there's something desperately wrong with your telescope, and instead of seeing Saturn, you might see a watermelon or um, maybe a peanut or something, and it won't look round to you. So it's very important when people build telescopes that they know about tangent lines and intersecting tangents. Okay, let's take a look at a couple of examples with tangents and wrap this up. Okay, so here we go. Here's the example. Okay, here we have two intersecting tangents. They intersect there. They intersect the circle there and there. So this says this is 10 inches long. How long is the missing side? Well, we know that these are equal. So because of that, guess what? This is 10 inches. Not too bad. The other one. The other way that we use tangents is we can maybe make a triangle. So in the second example, you see we have a triangle here. And this triangle has only one measurement in it, an x. Well, how in the world are we supposed to find this third one? We can't use trig because there's no missing, there's no sides. Right? So we can't use trigonometry to get x. But right here, we see we have a tangent line. And we see we also have a radius. And the radius and the tangent actually intersect at the point of tangency, just like uh, the previous little slide. So what actually happens is this is a right angle right there. <clears throat> so now we can go ahead and solve this problem. We know that 60 plus x plus 90 equals 180 from our triangle sum theorem. And if we add 60 and 90, we get 150. So we get x plus 150 equals 180, and you probably already know what x is now. So then we subtract 150, and of course we get x equals 30 degrees. Okay, so that's a little bit about tangent lines and chords.